Hi guys, welcome to my channel Innova World. Today our topic is Oblique Shock Waves. A detailed discussion about Oblique Shock Wave. So already have said in my last few videos when there is an occurrence of Oblique Shock Wave. Now you can see the properties of Oblique Shock Wave which ahead and behind the shock wave. What happens? The Mach number, velocity and the stagnation pressure decreases and the static properties increases. This is a fundamental properties uh, across the shock wave, oblique shock wave. And here you can see it's a scalar graph how the shock wave takes place. You can see here as the aircraft is or the spacecraft is inclining with the incident the change of oblique shock wave and the expansion shock wave so here in oblique shock wave relation will before i go with the oblique shock wave relation i will want to tell you about like what is mean by mu mu is an a mac wave so what what we can say when the distribution when we can say it is a strong distribution when the shock wave is greater than the mac wave this is a mac wave and the shock wave this is a shock wave when the shock wave is greater than the mac wave we call as a strong distribution this is just a fundamental concept and how the Mach wave and the Mach number are interrelated that is that is mu equals to sine inverse of 1 by Mach number now I will come a little discussion with this now I will come with a little discussion with this figure this is an oblique shock wave this is an oblique shock wave and this is a horizontal plane from this plane it is inclined at angle theta upwards theta angle inclined upwards now we are gonna see the relation so we before going for any relation we will put into basic equation basic assumptions so what are the four important assumptions steady in viscous that is no viscous force or viscous effect is implemented or undertaken adiabatic flow that is no heat is added into the system that is assumption and next is no body force has been applied into the system here we have taken a control volume a b c d e f this is a control volume we have taken when this is ahead of the shock wave and this is a behind or across the shock wave and um, here comes this is an upstream flow where the upstream flow is horizontal velocity and the horizontal Mach number and this side is a downstream where the downstream is inclined at the angle theta upward direction and what happens along with the direction the velocity as velocity as well as a Mach number is followed now in both the upstream and downstream the velocity are splitted in two components one is a tangential components and one is a normal component both tangential and normal component so i hope this is clear the velocity is split in two components one is a tangential component another is a normal component see the observe the uh, figure carefully see normal means this is a shock wave from the shock wave this is an imaginary uh, uh, velocity triangle we have taken so from here it is 90 degree and from this downstream section this from here we have taken this was a normal that means 90 degree from this 
flow from this shock wave now see here um, now see here here we'll say from the uh, basic equation that is continuity momentum and the energy if you see that from the equation we come to a conclusion that tangential component of the flow velocity is preserved or rather we can say the flow velocity is constant across an oblique shock wave that means that means w2 or and w1 and w2 are same that has been expressed over here and from the energy equation what we can derive is that is it is governed by a normal component of a free stream velocity that means the stagnation what is a change in the static properties with respect to the across the shock wave it will vary across the shock wave next comes now first consider this triangle upstream triangle so this is 90 degree this is beta now how we can say this is a beta now see here this is an oblique shock wave now here is an upstream flow this is the normal this is a tangential now this line and this shock wave oblique shock wave is parallel so from the horizontal we have what is a shock wave or shock angle is beta so from the horizontal opposite angle becomes a beta that's why we are considering as a beta now take this triangle take a sine component sine beta so what is mean by sine height by hypotenuse so what is height this is height and hypotenuse is this one so m n 1 by m 1 so by rearranging we get as m n 1 equals to m 1 sine beta just cross multiply you'll get it now calorifically perfect gas we know this now calorifically perfect gas we know this formula you should remember we have not seen the n n why we are using n to denote it is a normal shock wave here when you see this normal shock wave equation or perfect mm, calorifically normal gas so we are writing as m n square this is actually a relation between the m2 and m1 Mach number now come to the downstream flow considering the triangle here now see this is from here to here is theta now from this horizontal to the oblique shock wave is beta now if i have to find only this region so what it will be beta minus theta so if i have to consider this triangle if i have to consider this triangle so what is this angle beta minus theta right now again i'm gonna take a sine component over here so when you're taking a sine beta minus theta what do you get this is a height this is a hypotenuse similarly m n2 by m2 now rearranging m2 equals to m n2 by sine beta minus theta okay now you might have a question like why we are finding m2 why not let it be this equation be constant now i will tell you from the beginning like as per this formula, it will be i have explained because this formula will be useful for you to understand what for you it will be helpful for you to understand uh, how we are solving the problem okay suppose in your problem you don't have uh, any shock table they have given the values or gas table you don't have the values from your gas table so using this formula you can solve the problem so i will tell you how we can solve a problem now in a problem the shock wave has been given and theta value has been given beta value has also been given and the upstream Mach number has been given so what are things has been given m value given theta value that is a deflection value and the beta value what is shock angle value has been given now what you do is if uh, from the upstream value you know m1 value you know sine beta value you know so substitute in the calculator and you can find the mn1 
once you know the m and 1 you know what is a gamma value gamma value is 1.4 gamma value is 1.4 so from this gamma value you substitute gamma is 1.4 and m and 1 you can find from the previous equation m and 1 value you can find from the previous equation substitute in this equation you get this m and 2 square value now how you can remove the square root over that answer you get that m and 2 value now come to the downstream you know beta value you know theta value so you get this suppose beta is around uh, uh, 30 or 40 and theta value is 10 so you get as 40 minus 10 you get 30 sin 30 value you will get it and now from this equation you will get this m and 2 value so substitute so you can find the value of m2 that's why in your textbook or any other book they have written this expression but they have not mentioned how you have retrieved this formula now what is this question they ask is they ask the what the question they ask is they ask the mach number or behind the shock wave or behind mach number at the downstream flow or a downstream so using this formulas you can find the mach number at your downstream got it now here is a special case what is a special case when the beta has been considered as pi by 2 what is pi by 2 pi by 2 is nothing but 90 degree so when this angle will change to 90 degree that means perpendicular to the flow so we know perpendicular to the flow is normal shock this is an another important concept now comes here now use a similar triangle that is upstream and downstream use tan beta and tan beta minus theta you get this form now equate dividing this by this you get this expression and finally when you uh, simplify these terms you get tan theta equals to 2 cot beta bracket m1 square sine square beta minus 1 by m1 square gamma plus cos 2 beta plus 2 this is an important expression it's a called as a theta beta mach number relation or i can rather say deflection shock angle mach number relation of an oblique shock wave of an oblique shock wave this is an important expression Oh, from that important expression that is theta beta mach number they have generated a curve for some kind of problems you can solve uh, based on this graph right now I will come to some key points now I will come to some key points first key points it's uh, like when the upstream mach number has been given and the there is a maximum deflection is theta max so i will tell there is some limitation of a deflection we cannot exceed as per our wish so the deflection if the theta is greater than theta max suppose the theta max value is 45 degree angle and we cannot go beyond that if suppose in case the deflection is more than 45 degree angle what happens what happened it causes an detached curved shock wave ahead of the body if there is any angle beyond 45 degree or 45.5 degree beyond that what happens or beyond the theta max for a particular mach number what happens it causes a detached curved shock wave ahead of the body right next comes the value of theta increases as we increase there is a causes of increase in mach number next comes uh, already i have said this point like what is the limit when the mach number leads to infinity what is a theta max is 45.5 when gamma value is 1.4 next comes for a re for any reason for for any given theta less than theta max when the theta is less than theta max what happens there is a possibility of two things one is a weak shock wave solution another is a strong 
shock solution one is a weak and as a strong so you can see in your expression what happens when the beta is large we call as a strong shock wave and the beta value is small it causes a weak shock wave solution next comes when the theta is zero when the deflection is zero that means it goes on same horizontal plane and then what happens the beta is equals to 90 degree or mu what is mu mac wave the same thing has been explained over here for your better understanding likewise you can memorize this uh, thing uh, i have said no first topic how detached when the theta is greater than theta max this is the figure and when the theta is less than theta max it causes an attach but in all the upstream flow we have mac number is greater than one mac number is greater than one So this is an explanation for the previous slides. For an fixed theta, we consider the theta is fixed. Theta is not changing. If the m1 value, that is a Mach number, is one. If I am uh, consider the Mach number is from two, I am decreasing to one. From 2, I am decreasing to 1. So, what will happen? The beta value will also in increase. But, if I am increasing the from Mach number from 2 to uh, 3, what happens? If I am increasing the Mach number from 2 to 3, what happens? The beta value will decrease. So, as we know, beta value decrease, we, call, we get a weak shock solution. Right? So already have said these factors. Now comes shock polar. So you should know what is purpose of shock polar. Actually, it's a graphical representation which uh, explains the property of a shock wave. How the properties changes with respect to changing the deflection angle from zero to theta max and with the possible velocity. This is the expression you can see from here and um, this graph explains that see the outer circle is complete circle compared to other so what this explains that or uh, at a uh, when a shock polar is circle what is the condition mac that is m1 has to go infinity m1 has to go infinity and characteristics Mach number and the characteristic Mach number will be 2.45. This is an understanding the outer circle. When the shock polar is circle, when what is that? M1 it has to go infinity and the characteristic Mach number has to be 2.45. And um, in my next session, I will discuss about the problems. So stay tuned. It's for today. I'm signing off. So if you have further inquiry, you can drop to my contact box or command box. And don't forget to command, share and subscribe to my channel. Goodbye. Have a nice day.